I'm gonna tell y'all what Jimmy <laughs> wants. We keep it interesting there. If you wanna do all that, I'm gonna say where he going. <laughs> and y'all never gonna believe it. Wow. He might uh he wow. might be part of the old homie. Wow. <laughs> That's what you wanna do? <laughs> That's what you wanna do? Okay. Okay. He might be partners with his old homie. Oh, no, she I'll let y'all guess. <laughs> that video right there is trending on social media and it has me fired up because there's a good chance that Malik Nabbers has already been told by Jaden Daniels kind of what's going to happen because a lot of the time these players coming out of the draft actually have more insight information than we actually know. And they know things sometimes, right? They know teams that are interested. They know teams that are not interested. Their agents oftentimes are talking to owners and scouts and general managers, and they understand and are letting their guys know kind of what's going to happen and what to expect. And there's a chance that Malik Nabbers, who is a teammate with Jaden Daniels, keep in mind it's the two guys talking on IG Live. Uh, Malik Nabbers, the guy on the bottom, he obviously is telling Jaden Daniels, uh, and, and I say this, he's actually responding to a comment. Someone left a comment and is actually asking where Jaden Daniels is going to play. Malik Nabbers is actually responding to that comment saying, y'all are never going to believe this, uh, but Daniels is going to partner with his old homie. Now, people are stating that his old homie is Antonio Pierce, and there's a chance of someone else, but I don't think it really makes sense. You can look at the, like five or six teams that are interested in quarterbacks. There's really no one that Jaden Daniels has any sort of past connections with. Uh, Antonio Pierce is really the only guy. So uh, to me, this could be massive, massive, massive news. Again, it could mean absolutely nothing. It's rumor season. Uh, but do keep in mind, you know, uh, I know this firsthand. There's guys out there that are getting information and then they're passing it off to the players. The players know it. And then the players share that information with other guys, right? So in this instance, there's a chance that Jaden Daniels spoke to Malik Nabbers privately maybe a week ago, maybe a couple days ago. And there's a chance he had already told him that, hey, the Raiders are going to move up. The Raiders are interested in trading up, or maybe he told them that, hey, you know, uh, I was told by my agent that the Patriots don't want to take me with pick three. They're interested in J.J. McCarthy. They're interested in, in Caleb Williams. And if it's not those two guys, maybe they move off the pick, right? So to me, this opens things up for the Raiders solely based off of what Malik Nabbers is kind of putting out there. Now, of course, some people do think Jaden Daniels is the number two quarterback in this class, but I think he is one of the top four quarterbacks. Uh, you know, I wouldn't necessarily say say he's for sure my number two quarterback. Uh, I have, you know, all four of these guys I think are going to be successful. I think Caleb Williams, Drake, May, Malik Nabber, or I'm sorry, Jaden Daniels, uh, and J.J. McCarthy. I think all four of those guys are going to be really, really good quarterbacks. Uh, but there's a chance that the Patriots with that number three overall pick don't agree with that. They may say, you know, if it's not J.J. McCarthy, if it's not uh, Caleb Williams, the Patriots may say we'd rather take the generational prospect at number three and the Cardinals at number four might say, you know, we could settle with Malik Nabbers or we can get multiple first round picks for the number four overall pick. Right. So I think the Arizona Cardinals is going to be an interesting um, trade up option for the Raiders and I also think the Patriots may not take a quarterback. And again, I think there's a chance Jalen Daniels already knows this. and He's already told Malik Nabbers and he's probably told other people as well. To me, when I watched that video, I don't think Malik Nabbers was supposed to put out the information that he ultimately did put out. I think Jaden Daniels did not want him to put that information out there, but based off of what Nabbers says, there's a realistic chance that the Raiders end up getting Jaden Daniels. Now, I haven't actually given you guys insight on how I have valued Jaden Daniels. I watched a ton of his tape. I want to just kind of give you guys a quick breakdown of Daniels. You know, I did this for Bo Nix. I did this for Michael Penix Jr., but I haven't really done it for Jaden Daniels, and I want to talk about why I think Daniels can be a phenomenal quarterback in the NFL. Uh, so first and foremost, just from an athletic profile, Jaden Daniels is the most athletic quarterback coming out of this class. And more so than just this class, there's a chance that the day Jaden Daniels ends up becoming an NFL quarterback, there is a chance that he is now the second most athletic quarterback in the NFL. Right? That is the type of athleticism this guy has. right? And to me, that's something that you have to you know, value. That's something you have to consider when you're drafting Daniels. I think Lamar Jackson is still going to be the, the most athletic, but I think Daniels is right there, right? One and two is Jackson and Daniels. Daniels is also 6'4". He's on the skinnier side, but he can get stronger. He will get thicker as he gets into the NFL. And I, I think as long as he keeps that athleticism, he's going to be very hard to bring down in the open field.
field. You can already watch this guy's tape, and you know when he pulls the ball on read options and he gets out in space, you oftentimes see this guy taking it 40, 50, 60 yards to the house. Right? The guy's very, very fast, very quick, very explosive. But again, he is a quarterback, so you know the, you, you, you got to value the athleticism part, kind of where it goes, right? Obviously, he's been drafted to be a quarterback, not a running back. Uh, but the thing with Daniels is I think he's still a very good quarterback as well. Uh, one of the things LSU did probably like 20% of the time this past season was they ran a lot of slot fades. Uh, it's a route concept where one guy runs a hitch or an out route, and the guy in the slot basically runs a fade to the corner. And uh, LSU did this a lot. And... I think Jaden Daniels did a great job throwing those slot fades. He did a great job putting the ball where it needed to go. And I think with the Raiders, you know, if the Raiders run that same design concept, which I think they will, I think Luke Getsy has done this in the past. If the Raiders run that same concept, I think Daniels can fit the ball wherever it needs to go. Right? The guy has a very, very good arm, especially on deep passes. I think ball placement, very good job, very accurate, has a very strong arm as well. And I think Daniels can get it done in the NFL in terms of being able to throw the ball deep. He does struggle a little bit on short to intermediate passes. Uh, there are throws where, you know, if a running back runs out into the flats, he'll throw it too high or he'll throw it too short. Uh, he has, you know, sometimes he'll struggle with those passes. And I, I, I do think that ball placement sometimes is overrated. And this is me personally. People may disagree with this, but I've stated this in the past. You know, when you're in the NFL, uh, if you're the number one quarterback in ball placement and you're comparing that to the 32nd quarterback, in terms of ball placement, the difference isn't that much, right? These are NFL quarterbacks we're talking about. These are not, you know, we're not comparing a high school quarterback to an NFL quarterback. Uh, but I do think in that aspect, ball placement is sometimes overrated. Because you can have a guy with a great arm. You can have a guy that can make every pass across the field, but he's limited in his athletic profile. He's limited in able to create the pocket awareness and presence may not be that good. And with that, they'll struggle. They'll struggle because the NFL has changed. Right, uh, we've seen guys like Derek Carr and Kirk Cousins and Ryan Tannehill have so much success early on, but as they kind of age and they get a little bit slower, they don't have the same type of success. We've also seen quarterbacks, for example, like Aiden Connell come in, and they're not that fast at all. Just coming in, they struggle. Right, they struggle when the pressure comes. They struggle if you're not able to keep them clean, which in the NFL it's a hard thing to do, uh, especially if you're a quarterback that can't move. Right, one of the things that Jaden Daniels will help the Raiders with, or I guess whatever team ends up taking him, is he's so fast, he's so quick, those defensive ends have to slow down. The defensive tackles have to slow down when they pass rush, right? If you're Max Crosby on the right side and you're chasing Jaden Daniels or Patrick Mahomes or whoever it is, you're not going to just quickly jump to the inside every single time because Patrick Mahomes has the pocket awareness to get out of there. Jaden Daniels also has that pocket awareness. You can see his tape. Uh, he's able to see things very, very well. You bring a blitzer, he'll see it, he'll take off running. A guy, you know, does a spin move to the inside, he'll see it, he'll step out of there. If the defense tackles run a game and, you know, one guy falls down and a lane gets open, Jaden Daniels will run through it. And he doesn't always look to run. He does step up into the pocket. He does keep his eyes downfield to throw the football. Uh, and, but, of course, you know, I think ball placement is something Daniels can improve on, and I do think in the NFL he will improve on it. I think his ability to create the pocket awareness, the presence, he feels pressure well. I think he does a really, really good job at all of those things. Uh, I think he has good velocity, good power. I think in the NFL, you have to have velocity. I think sometimes velocity is more important than ball placement in itself uh, because, you know, you can think of where the ball has to go on a, let's say, deep uh, dig route. You can think of where the ball needs to go, right? And if you're not able to fit the ball in, in between the safeties, uh, sometimes that velocity is the difference of completing the pass and not completing it. If it's not hard enough, you're not going to be able to complete it. Of course, ball placement is going to be a factor there. Uh, but again, you know, the difference between number one and number 32 isn't so much that you're not going to be able to hit those passes, right? Again, ball placement, when I talk about it, means that, you know, on, you know, 19 of 20 passes, it's good, but then he'll miss that easy one, right? That quick throw under the flats, he'll miss that sometimes, right? So to me, those are going to be the little things he has to kind of improve on. I think playing within a structured offense will be another thing he'll just have to continue to work on. Not saying he can't do it. He obviously can. One step drop, three step drops. The guy gets the ball out. He's able to complete the passes. Uh, but it will be one of the things he has to work on. You know, you can't talk about Jaden Daniels without saying the obvious, which is he got to play with two first-round picks. Uh, he got to play with Brian Thomas Jr., who's going to be a first-round pick. 
And Malik Nabbers is going to be a top 10 pick. So those are his two wide receivers. Uh, he, they also had another wide receiver who some people believe within the next two years can also possibly be a first-round pick, right? So with that, yeah, a lot of the times Jaden Daniels did get to throw the ball up. Not a lot of the times, but sometimes he got to throw the ball up and Malik Nabbers would just catch it out of the air, right? He just jump, take the ball away from people. Uh, but with uh, Jaden Daniels being able to do that in college, he'll also come to the Raiders. He'll also have some talent around him where the talent will help him, right? We saw Bryce Young come in to uh, go to the Panthers, and they had no talent, so he didn't get that type of help, right? Jaden Daniels will have that because we have Devontae Adams who will you know, catch it over guys. We have Trey Tucker and Michael Mayer who can make plays, Jacoby Myers. Uh, so with that, I think Jaden Daniels can come to the Raiders and have success, but will it actually happen, right? That's going to be the big question. Either way, I'm very excited for it. I think the Raiders are going to possibly take a quarterback, and I think there's a real chance Jaden Daniels is going to be the guy. Right, remember, we love Jaden Daniels uh, in the media, but we don't know what the actual teams think of Jaden Daniels. Uh, Tua Tungvaloa was a quarterback who had a ton of help at quarterback uh, from Alabama. Right, He had all these first-round picks around him, as did Matt Jones. And we saw these guys did not have success. Uh, we saw these guys struggle as they got into the NFL. Uh, and, you know, Tua obviously has bounced back a little bit, but I think most people agree that he's not that good of a quarterback. The scheme obviously helps him so much more than him as an actual quarterback. Uh, so it's going to be interesting, but I want to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments below. What do you guys think about Malik Nabbers kind of putting that information out there? Uh, let me know in the comments below. Thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time with another video.